welcome to worship. Today we hear about how much God loves us, that he has uh, known us ahead of time and chosen us ahead of time just because he chose us to be his own and loves us that much. So we begin our worship with the opening hymn. <laughs>
your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We recite the psalmody. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. From this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans in the 8th chapter. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he has glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus Christ who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written... For your sake, we, faith de we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with our congregational memory verse. John 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. The Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and brought, bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. 
When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. We continue with our children's message. Well, children, I'd like you to think for a moment about uh, how you would tell somebody that you love them. How would you go about letting somebody know that you love them? Can you think of some ways that you can do that? Maybe one of the things you're thinking about is you could just tell them. If you love them, say, I love you. And that certainly is a good way to do it. You can tell somebody you love them and just speak it. Or maybe you might want to write a card or a letter expressing how you love them and telling them you love them so very much. But there are other ways of letting people know that you love them too. You can do nice things for people. You can be kind to them and show them that you love them that way. You maybe even give them uh, nice gifts and that can show your love. So now, how do you think God tells us that he loves us? One of the ways that God lets us know that he loves us is he simply says so. He tells us he loves us, and he says that again and again and again. He tells us how he loves us. You open up the Bible, you can find it a lot of different places where God says, I love you, and God will always love you. So he tells us that, and we can read it over and over again, like God's love letter to us, the Bible is. And so God tells us he loves us. But God shows his love for us in other ways, too. He does nice things for us. God protects us. He keeps us safe from evil. And God also gives us wonderful presents. Um, If you're wearing clothes, and I assume that you are, that's a gift from God. If you had a, a breakfast or lunch today, you know for sure that God has given you that gift. You had something to eat, and God gave that to you. If you've got a a place to sleep at night, you know again that God has given you that good gift. You have parents and grandparents. Those are gifts from God. Everything that you have is a gift from God. And, of course, the greatest gift of God, the way God uh, uh, blessed us so much and showed his love to us so much is when he suffered and died on that cross to take away our sins. That said, more than anything else, I love you, and I would do anything for you. I even die for you, because I love you that much. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your wonderful love. You've made it very clear to us that you do love us, and we love you too, Lord. Help us to express our love for you by doing kind things for you and for everybody around us, and may we be more loving every day. Amen. We continue our worship with the next hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Different people treasure different things. One uh, person might uh, treasure his car. Maybe it's a very special car and he treats it with great care, washing and waxing and making sure it stays away from other cars so there's no dings that come to it, taking all kinds of precautions with it because it's very precious to him. Maybe for somebody else, uh, what's very precious is uh, maybe a piece of jewelry or uh, something received from grandmother uh, that is just irreplaceable. Different people treasure different things. What is it that you treasure? Is there some special possession that you have that you very much treasure? Would you be surprised to hear that God has a special treasure? In Deuteronomy chapter 7, we hear that uh, the Israelites are God's special possession, that which he uh, loves very dearly, which he had chosen to be his own. You are a holy people belonging to the Lord your God. Uh, God tells them as he makes them to be his special people. And if the uh, Israelites get the idea that, uh, that they were chosen by God because they were somehow better than others, God uh, dispossesses them of that idea very quickly in verse 7. God says, The Lord had his heart set on you and chose you, not because you were more numerous than all peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. God didn't choose them because they were greater in any way. And uh, if you think that God has chosen you, because you're better than others in some way, uh, you got another thing coming. God has chosen you. You are his precious one. He has set his heart on you. He has bound himself to you. God has chosen you and loves you greatly. But God doesn't love you because you're so wonderful. God doesn't love you because you're so beautiful or so strong or so good. Matter of fact, when God chose us, not one of us was good. Our being good or not has nothing to do with God choosing us. It's all about God setting his heart on you and me, on what he chose, whom he chose. And he has chosen you and me, he has set his heart on us. God chose you and made you to be his very own. Because the Lord loved you and kept his oath. He tells the people how, how he brought them out of Egypt with a strong and mighty arm and set them free from Pharaoh and from uh, the powers of slavery. And God says he set them free and has showed his love in that way. And so know that the Lord your God, verse 9, is faithful, that God is God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant and his steadfast love for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commands. He keeps his covenant and his steadfast love for a thousand generations. And down to this day, to this very generation, God continues to keep his promises, every one of them, and he continues to observe his steadfast love. He has set his heart upon you. God loves you as well as the Israelites. In uh, the book of Romans, we hear about how God has loved us and chosen us. In verse 29 it says, For those God knew ahead of time, he also chose ahead of time. Those he knew beforehand, he chose beforehand. This idea of God knowing ahead of time is not primarily the idea of uh, knowing the future. But the, the central idea here is that God knew you. He knew you. He knew who you were. Even knowing that you aren't good, but he would make you good. He, he knows you and he chooses you to be his own. And those whom God chose ahead of time, he also called. And those he called, he also made to be righteous. 
He made us to be righteous because, of course, uh, we were not righteous on our own. We were not good when God called us. We were not beautiful. We were ugly with sin. But he has taken away the ugliness. He's taken away our sin. God has loved us that much. He not only took away our ugliness, but he made us to be beautiful. He made us to be righteous, his holy people. And those he made righteous, he also glorified. Oh, and how we have already been glorified, but what's to come? What's to come is going to be wonderful when in eternal life we will be glorified and be able to live with God forever in such joy to share in his glory. And so he has done for us. He has loved us so much that he has given himself for us, gave the ultimate price. He suffered and died on that cross to take away our sins. And if he's done that, we know he'll give us every other good thing. Verse 28, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his plan. And this is absolutely true. He works all things together for good for those who are called according to his plan. This is not just a wish or a wild dream. God really does work all things together for our good. It's his plan. It's exactly what he has done. And it is true that God, who is faithful and trustworthy, continues to love us and loves us with an everlasting love. And so he certainly will do that. Here's the evidence again. Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He's also at the right hand of God, and he prays for us. That's how much God loves us. That's how much Jesus loves you. He died for you. He continues to pray for you. He's not going to let anything separate you from his love. Pandemics and terrible illnesses and crushing pain will not be able to separate you from God's love. Drought and famine and terrible storms will not be able to separate you from God's love. Even the angels in heaven and all the powers of hell will not be able to separate you from God's love. It is true that we may have to go through some very hard times, but they will not separate us from God's love. The difficult things may come. As it is written, because of you we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. But nothing will separate us from the love of God. He is the one who will hold on to us to the end. He is the one who has loved us and has chosen us and to be made our own. He loves us. He always loves us. And in return, we love God. When Jesus uh, tells the parable of the uh, hidden treasure and the pearl of exceeding great price, He's really talking about intense love, significant love. You uh, heard the stories read just a little earlier. Uh, the first parable Jesus tells is of the man who's digging in a field and finds a treasure. And he's so filled with joy that he goes and sells everything so he can buy that field and have that treasure. It means that much to him that he would sell everything for it. Again, the second story Jesus tells is a story of a man looking for good pearls, but he finds one that is exquisite, extraordinary, so wonderful that he has to have it, and he sells everything he has so that he can have that pearl. And that's how valuable the kingdom of heaven is to us. To be with God and to have a relationship with him is of such value that it's worth everything we have and so much more. It is of such great value our relationship with Jesus is. There are Bible commentaries who tell us that um, from their perspective, this uh, pearl of great price and the, the treasure found in the field is not us treasuring God's kingdom, but other, the other way around that God so treasures us that he would give everything for us. And so he has done. Jesus suffered and died on that cross. He went through extreme torture, not only physical but also spiritual torture, 
emotional torture as he died on that cross for you and for me. That's how much he loves us. He gave up everything for us. The kingdom of God is for Jesus like a pearl of great price. You are God's special possession. You are his special treasure. And uh, because he loves us so much, God is also our treasured possession. We are his treasured possession, and he is ours. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Our worship continues with the song of Zechariah. Father, we come before you, your people whom you have set your heart upon. We thank you for your grace and your love. Though undeserving, you have chosen and called us to be conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus. In your love and grace, you have made us to be your people, and we ask that you would continually be with us that we be, would be made more and more like your Son as the object of your undying love. Lord, we come before you with our prayers and petitions that you would be with this congregation and for all the congregations for Resurrection Lutheran, 
for Concordia Lutheran and for Mount Olive Lutheran, that the gospel would be proclaimed, would bring about faith. By the work of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would bear fruit in our midst for those who do not yet know your Son or your love, but also for us who continually need to hear the gospel and to be nurtured by your word. We ask that you would be with its pastors, its teachers, its lay leaders, its administrators, that your Son, Jesus, would be proclaimed in word and deed in all that we do. Lord, we ask that you would continually be with our country and the world and our communities as we continue to undergo precautions during this pandemic, that you would be with those that are sick, that you would be with those that are mourning for the loss of their loved ones, but that you would bring healing according to your good purposes. For you have promised that you work the good for all who love you according to your good purpose. May we have the courage to pray for your will and to know that you will bring all things to completion and restoration in Jesus on the day of resurrection. Lord, we ask that you would also be with those that are suffering from isolation, from addictions, from depression during this time, that you would help provide them with resources that friends and family would reach out and that we as your church would embrace them in the ways that are safe during this time, to love all people to Jesus and their needs which you fulfill through your Son. We pray all of these things in Jesus' most holy and precious name, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. Amen. As disciples of our Lord Jesus and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray as he taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
We're so happy that you were able to, to join us for worship online. We hope that you are doing well. If you have not yet um, felt comfortable to come in, if you're still taking precautions to stay home and worship uh, from a remote location, we're, we're thankful that we um, are able to, to share and worship the gospel, uh, to share and worship Jesus through the gospel together. Just a few announcements. We, have, uh, we continue to have our Zoom Connections Hour on Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 7.45. This is another opportunity to, to gather virtually, um, but we are able to, to speak and converse face-to-face, -face, as it were, online. Um, if you, you can do this through a smartphone, you can do this through a computer. If you have any questions about how to, to sign up for that, please let us know here in the office, and we will help get you connected with that. We're going through the Gospel of Mark, and it has been a wonderful, wonderful time for the congregation. Uh, know that God has set his eyes upon you through, through his son Jesus, that you are the pearl of great price for him, and he has given all to, to come to you and claim you as his own. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.